The Alternative Information and Development Center's AIDC's 2015 research on Lawnman exposed the centrality of wage evasion as the principal motivation behind the illicit siphoning of hundreds of millions of rand out of South Africa to a Bermudan company called Western Metal Sales. We also exposed Appleby as Lawnman's preferred enabler. A summary of the Lawnman case is now necessary to enable readers to better appreciate the wage dimension in the use of tax and secrecy havens. AIDC's report, The Bermuda Connection, started as a research project for the Maricana Commission. The Commission's authority provided access to the financial statements of Lawnman's subsidiaries in South Africa. These statements are lodged in the archives of the Commercial and Intellectual Property Commission. In August 2014, we reported to the Maricana Commission that the annual reports of Lawnman's main subsidiary in South Africa, Western Platinum, revealed transfers of about R250 million a year in sales commissions to Bermuda, which continued until 2012. This occurred despite nobody sitting on the Paradise Island selling anything. Aloni, this offshore payment would have allowed for AR3500 a month wage increase for 4,000 rock drill operators who started to strike in August 2012. According to the annual reports lodged at the Commercial and Intellectual Property Commission, duly audited by KPMG, the transfers did not stop in 2008, as Lawnman stated in a 23 September 2014 media release. The research also revealed that it was offshore specialist law firm Appleby Services which facilitated Lawnman's Bermuda connection. According to the Bermudian Company's Registry, the address of Lawnman's letterbox company ever since 2003 has been 22 Victoria Street, Hamilton, Bermuda, which also is the address of Appleby Services. Indeed, the recent Paradise Papers disclosure by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalism ICIJ of over 13 million documents has exposed Appleby Services as dedicated to organizing the avoidance measures of companies and wealthy individuals from all over the world, including Queen Elizabeth II of England 22 Victoria Street, Bermuda is, no doubt, also the address of hundreds of other empty companies, subsidiaries of transnational enterprises that use Appleby Services to stash away hundreds of millions of dollars. In response to ICIJ's disclosure of Appleby Services, the old law firm has responded that there is no evidence of any wrongdoing, either on the part of ourselves or our clients, adding we are a law firm which advises clients on legitimate and lawful ways to conduct their business. We do not tolerate illegal behavior. The Guardian, UK. Does this denial of responsibility include facilitation of arrangements in breach of different countries' anti-avoidance rules in the 23rd of September 2014 media release, Lawnman admitted, in public, that there were no commercial reasons for paying bills of hundreds of million rent to Bermuda. This was when it assured that payments to Western Metal Sales had been phased out long ago. The move was based on cost concerns having a company registered in Bermuda and operating out of London was expensive and resulted in marketing personnel being based closer to Lawnman's operations. In other words, there was never any service provided from Bermuda. One month earlier, in August 2014 before the affair exploded, Lawnman didn't even talk about London. It affirmed, in an email exchange with Craig McCune of Amab Hungain, that all sales were made from Western Platinum Limited in South Africa, just as could be expected Lawnman's metal is sold directly by Lawnman's operating subsidiary WPL direct to third parties at prices which are market prices or WPL negotiates prices with customers as all commercial entities do. The Mail Guardian also quoted an email from a lawnman, saying the fact is that all of Lawnman's metal is sold directly by Lawnman's operating subsidiary WPL direct to third parties. Lawnman's media department published the long exchange with McCune as a QA document on their website. Lawnman's confusion and inconsistencies are exposed in other parts of the very same document, when they explain that actually, since 2008 it was Lawnman's head office company, LMS, that was doing the selling of Lawnman's metal, and not WPL. But what is it really that Appleby is helping transnational companies to avoid when their staff manage bank accounts and letterboxes the media and many commendable campaigns continue to focus on tax avoidance? They are ignoring that the central purpose of these schemes is to avoid all obligations or stakeholder claims that would make inroads into profits, not least wages. Measured in rander dollars, the biggest effect of tax avoidance and tax evasion on the social and political situation in South Africa is not losses of tax incomes. For example, using a rough calculation for simplicity, with a corporate tax rate of 28%, for every R100 million taken illicitly out of the country, the tax authority loses R28 million while the remainder, R72 million, is lost for wages and investments. The illicit outflows to tax havens are instrumental in keeping the low-wage regime in place. 
The second biggest effect is on the minority shareholders who hold shares in the subsidiaries which are getting their funds depleted by fake invoicing from Dubai, Mauritius, Malta, Bermuda, British Virgin Islands, Netherlands, Cayman Islands, etc. This can be B capitalists or workers' pension trusts, but they get screwed well before the SAR revenue services. Thus, SARS is not the first in the queue of losers. If the illicit flows were to be curbed or blocked, the government would only take its smaller percentage share in tax after other stakeholders had taken what is due to them. It would take its share only as number four in the queue, if we speak of mining communities, because without cross-border profit shifting, the subsidiaries of transnational mining companies could not plead poverty when reneging from the social labor plans and land rehabilitation obligations or even as number five because in many cases and we are working on such cases shareholders in the listed mother company are also being screwed the transfers offshore are secret to them. In the consolidated annual reports, these transfers are booked as paid to external service providers. Bank accounts managed by firms such as Applebee services are then only accessed by a group of insiders, the real rulers of the world. In such cases, the brazen advert on PricewaterhouseCoopers website that they have the best transfer pricing solutions that maximize shareholder value is surprisingly wrong. Tax havens are a central mechanism for supporting the intent behind neoliberalism, which is not only about minimizing taxation of the rich. The role of these offshore jurisdictions is to divest any social costs or responsibility for society and majority well-being directed at the super-wealthy, who own and drive the machinations of transnational corporations. If there is any political will in the government to do anything about this, the first and foremost simple measure is to abolish all the secrecy that is now protecting the finances of transitional corporations. The Paradise Papers make this anti-secrecy statement again with a bang. Besides showing that appalling wealth in seas of poverty is very concrete and personal, and besides disclosing the hypocrisy of certain politicians, this call for bringing it all out into the open is perhaps the greatest achievement of hundreds of Journalists who have worked on the Paradise Papers project. DM Brian Ashley is director of the Alternative Information and Development Center AIDC. Dick Forsland is senior economist and researcher at AIDC. Photo Jardine House, C, which houses the offices of Appleby in Central District, Hong Kong, China, the 7th of November 2017. Leaked financial documents dubbed the Paradise Papers have revealed how powerful and ultra-wealthy people secretly invest vast amounts of cash in offshore tax havens. The vast majority of the transactions involve no legal wrongdoing. According to the reports, the leaked documents allegedly originate from the Bermuda-based law firm Appleby. Photo Jerome Thivrypief